So for a while now, we've been talking about this new profiling tool for Flash content called Monocle. Well, this product is now released, and it has the new name of Adobe Scout. And it's actually free for you to use right now. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to download it and how to enable your Flash content to be able to be profiled by Scout, and then just take a tour of the interface. So the place to get Adobe Scout is on the Creative Cloud. So if you go to creative.adobe.com, um, you're going to need a Creative Cloud account. Now you can just go ahead and get a free account. If you don't, uh, you know, if you don't have a paid account, that's fine because again, you have access to it right now for free. And if you come to that page, you'll see that we now have the Game Developer Tools, which is part of a bigger launch, which contains Scout as well as the Gaming SDK. Um, so you're going to want to get all of this if you're interested in game development. But I'm just going to go ahead and click download. And from this page, you're going to see obviously you can get the flash tools like always. And then here you can get Adobe Scout. So just go ahead and download it. It should actually um, you know, correctly determine what operating system you're on. And also, if, again, if you're into game development, download the gaming SDK. And this contains all kinds of uh, frameworks like Starlink, Feathers, Away 3D. Um, it also contains a bunch of native extensions uh, for you to use for mobile devices. And then also we have the Flash C++ compiler. Um, and that is what previously was known as Alchemy. But go ahead and download Adobe Scout. So if I open up Scout, um, we can see it's already... It's got some content in here right now, but I'm going to go ahead and close this. And that just actually goes to show that any Flash content that is running on your system, whether it be in Flash, whether it be in Adobe Air, or even you can en enable it for mobile devices, Scout is immediately going to start profiling that content. But let's say that I have um, some existing content. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this Swift file which is just the, uh, a game uh, that I've been developing. So I'm just going to hit play game. I'm just going to, well, that wasn't very successful, but it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to play a little bit and close it. Now you'll see already that Scout has started to um, acquire some information, some profiling information, um, but it doesn't give me access to, uh, for instance, the action script function calls, which is going to allow me to see how long uh, these function calls are taking. It also doesn't allow me to see stage 3D rendering, um, top activities, activity sequence, basically all the cool stuff that's inside a Scout uh, is not showing up. And that's because we have to um, compile our applications with a special flag, which is this advanced te uh, telemetry option. And this is what's going to make you able to um, you know, nicely profile your content. So how do you actually uh, do that? So the easiest is actually in Flash Builder 4.7. This is actually built into the UI now. So what I'm going to do is to say new, and I'll just create a new action script project. Uh, I'll just call it Scout Test. And just click Finish. So we're not going to do anything with this application, but I just want to show you how to enable that tel uh, telemetry option is just to go into your project properties. And then under Action Script Compiler, you can see we now have these telemetry options. Well, there's only one. And we can check this off to enable detailed telemetry. And then once we do that, our resulting Swift or Air file that we create is going to be able to have all of that information that you want inside of Adobe Scout. So now another issue which comes up, which I mentioned before, is what if we already have a Swift file and we don't, I mean, we either can't recompile it or just don't want to recompile it? Well, there's a few different things you can do. Essentially, you can enable a Swift um, to, to be profiled. And the easiest way to do it is to use this tool created by um, my evangelism colleague, Renan Erickson. If you go to renan.com, it'll bring you to his blog. And the, the uh, most recent post here um, contains this Air application, which is called Swift Scout Enabler. And this essentially is great because it allows you to just take an existing Swift file, drag it onto this application, and then it will immediately generate a Swift, an identical Swift, 
that's been enabled for telemetry. So you can see you can download that air application here. And I just want to show you how you actually use that. So I'm going to launch it up. And here's the application. And again, very simple. I have this uh, Starling ship uh, Swift on my desktop. And you can see we have a couple of options. It's going to create a new file um, with underscore scout added to the file name. You can customize that. Um, and if your Swift has a password, you can put it in here. But all I'm going to do is just to drag it onto my app. And immediately what's happened here on my desktop is I now have this new Swift file called starlingship underscore scout, which, is, which again is enabled um, now for telemetry. So very easy to, um, to either to enable on new projects or to take existing Swifts and enable it. So now one of the things you'll notice um, about Scout is any Flash content that I'm going to be running is going to be um, uh, profiled here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to so just going to say file close all just so we get back to the beginning. Okay, so when we uh, this left hand panel here, this basically is setting up um, which information do we want to sample for or do we want to capture when we profile. So by the default, we have the action script sampler, which again is going to tell you how long your function calls are taking. And you can tell which function calls um, are taking the most time. So you can you know, look into it and, and figure out where bottlenecks might appear. Um, and also we can do CPU usage. Um, and you can see on each of these, it has an overhead uh, message, whether it's low, medium, or high. And that's based on how much this is actually going to affect your running um, flash application. So we can see if we want to track stage 3D recording, which is going to give us um, all of the low level GPU calls that are being made and also allow us to visually play back our session. Um, that's going to be an overhead of high, but I want to see that information. So I'm going to check this off. So again, you want to set up your, um, you know, specifically on what you want to profile for. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this panel. And now we're actually ready to uh, start profiling. So what I'm going to do is to launch that Swift, which again has been enabled. And we can see it's already um, doing some stuff there inside of Scout. So let me just play this for a second, and then I'll, I'll kill myself. So lots of excitement and lots of action. Um, all right. Let me just go into that. Okay, so now I've killed myself. The game is over. So now I'm going to stop my Swift. So now let's look at um, what information was actually um, captured and, and how I can look at that information. So up at the top is essentially my timeline. So we can see here the entire um, session that was captured here. And I can move along that timeline just by dragging on this little rectangle. And down in the time, the frame timeline here, what I can see is all of the individual uh, frames, and it allows me to drill down to information about that specific frame. So I'm going to scale this up. And one of the things you'll notice here in this timeline is this red uh, line, and that's called the budget. That's basically saying, you know, this Swift was actually set to run at 60 frames per second which means that on each frame it has uh, you know, budget for 17 milliseconds. Um, so if I'm doing some type of action script or some type of operation is happening that's going over this red line, well, that's a problem because that means that we're essentially going to skip a frame because there's too much to do and I'm using too much time. Um, and you know, so that's generally not a good thing. So what I can do now is to drill into this. So we can see here that I have this big spike here on this frame. So I'm going to select that frame. And now we can actually get detailed information about it. So we can see here um, the action script that was being called. Um, we can drill down into that. And it allows me to see um, the built-in packages that were being used. And that's essentially the Flash Player APIs. Or we can drill into user packages. And here we can see the two packages I'm using. So I'm using 
green sock, and I'm also using Starling. And when I select Starling, we can see down here in the action script panel, I have the Starling.onEnterFrame, which is the one function that was running um, you know, when this frame hit. So I can just expand all of this and start drilling down uh, and look at, at the, the call stack essentially. And each of these is gonna have a time associated with it. So I can come down and here we can see the ones that are grayed out are actually, um, if I just select everything now, and we can see that that's actually a different ActionScript library. This is mine because it's at the top level. So here I have menu.playclick, and we're actually seeing all of my ActionScript, um, and I can, I can isolate that as well. So now another thing um, that I might want to check is for, okay, I see this huge spike, but what happened on this frame? Like, I, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I can take a guess what happened, but it would be good if I could see what was actually happening. And now since Starling is obviously targeting stage 3D, I can delve into the stage 3D rendering. And what you're seeing here is an actual reproduction of the visuals that were there on this particular frame. And on the right here are all of the stage 3D calls that are being made. Now, one of the things that should jump right out to you, look at all these texture uploads. Now, that is obviously going to cause, uh, you know, a slowdown because when we're up uploading a lot of textures to the GPU, that's going to obviously cause a slowdown. Now, another thing we can do is to go piece by piece through the draw triangles calls. So I can go to draw triangles here, and just by using the arrow keys, we can see that draw triangles call actually... Um, made the ship appear. And again, I can come up and we can see the draw triangles. It's a little hard to see there, but the score was just drawn. And I can continue going and we can see one layer of stars was being redrawn on that. But more importantly, what I want to do is to see what, why, what happened here to make this happen. So I'm going to go back one frame and we can see very clearly what happened. Well, this is when I clicked on play game and then it now switched to the play state for the game. So um, you can imagine what I was doing there is as soon as you hit play game, I'm essentially creating my object pools of things like bullets and particles. So that's why you're seeing all that texture generation. Now this is potentially acceptable um, because it's at the very beginning. I don't wanna see a huge spike like this, obviously in the middle of the gameplay. Okay, so let's look at some of the other information uh, we can get in here. Now, I do want to warn you that there is more information than you would ever want available to you here in Scout. And to be honest with you, it can get a little overwhelming. Um, if you're a hardcore action script guy and, you know, this is awesome to you, to be honest with you, a lot of this stuff I'm not even sure how to process yet. Um, but what I can do is to see the top activities um, on a specific frame. So here we can see the breakdown of time. So 96, um, you know, or 70%, if you, it's easier to look at a percentage, was happening in the enter frame event. And now here it are, is flash player things, rasterizing edges, decompressing, decompressing images. And it also enables me to see garbage collection. So I'm going to do is to scroll over where I died. And here you can see we have a big spike. And what I can do is to start looking um, at things. So here we can see we have garbage collection happening. We can see a big spike in garbage collection. And we can go to the activity sequence here um, to see all of the different activities that were happening. And in my action script panel now, we can see that that's where my garbage collector was kicked in. And I can look here um, that essentially that's inside of my death function. And that's where I'm essentially killing things. So when the game has actually, or you know, when the game is over, when you've died, that's when I implement that. And again, we can see if I go back, that's what the screen looked like immediately when I died. And then essentially I'm killing all of that stuff and that's why there's a big spike in the GC. So now another thing I can do is to zoom in here and I can get a, you know, one-to-one -one, uh, view of this. Now a nice little thing that I found this is useful for is 
um, to fine tune your collision detection. So I'm doing essentially distance based collision detection between the ship, the ship center and the bullet center. Well, I can see right on that frame, that's right where the collision happened. So, you know, that might be acceptable. Maybe I want to tweak it a little bit. So having this visual preview of what's available uh, on a specific frame is very, very useful. So again, I'm not going to go hardcore into to all the features here. Um, I did want to also point out that if you're doing a regular display list project, um, you're going to see things like the hotspots for events and the essentially the dirty rectangles that are needing to be um, rendered um, you know, when you're using your uh, application. So up here in the timeline, we can also see memory. So here we have a breakdown of memory over time. So here you can see we have a spike in memory. Um, and I can drill down into where is that memory coming from. So we have action script objects. We have bitmaps, um, bitmap display objects. And it's just amazing we can drill down to this much detail. And I can see over the course of my application um, spikes in memory. And you know even if I have a memory leak, because obviously I'm going to see it going up and up and up throughout my session. We can also check GPU memory as well. Um, so we can see that I, you know, the, the amount of textures that I have here um, and things like that, index buffers, vertex buffers. Um, and over here we can track GPU memory over time. And a really interesting thing is we can track events over time. So from this, I can actually get we hover over this, I can see when mouse events were happening. So I can see here that the mouse move event, um, for some reason, was, was being handled here. I have keyboard events. So I can scroll over, and here's all of the keyboard events. And this is obviously maybe when I'm moving the ship or when I'm actually um, you know, firing a bullet. We can see network events, timer events, rendering events. Obviously, there's going to be one on every frame. Um, and we can also get trace events. And we'll see traces happen here in this trace log. Um, so again, it will, it's going to take you, you know, a little bit of time to get up to speed with all these features, but it's really a good problem to have is that there's, there's just so much good information here that allows you to drill down and to see where your performance bottlenecks are. Now, though all of this is cool, being able to run it in a Swift and an Air application, but even cooler than that is this all works on mobile devices as well. So if you have an Android device or an iOS device that you're deploying to, you can actually be, let's say, on your iPad interacting with your uh, game. And all of that information is coming over through Wi-Fi into Scout. So you can actually profile it running on your device. Um, and I do plan on doing a tutorial soon covering that aspect of it. But it's pretty simple. You just have to get the Adobe Scout app from either the iOS app store or the Android market. So that's just a basic introduction to getting started with Scout. And leave some feedback in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions, specific questions, I'll make sure that there's some members of the Adobe Scout team that are following that thread as well.